Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're going to be working on this interesting algebra question from Japanese Math Olympiad, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is if m and n are relative prime, positive integers, and what's the GCD of 5 to the power of m plus 7 to the power of m, and 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n? So for this question, I'll be using Euclidean algorithm. So without the loss of generality, if this m is greater than n, we can try factoring this 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of m using this 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n as a factor. So in that case, we can represent your 5 to the power of m plus 7 to the power of n is equal to 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n as a factor. Then the next factor should be looking like 5 to the power of m minus n plus 7 to the power of n minus n. But this is not the end of it, because if you expand this, then it should be looking like 5 to the power of m, and then plus 5 to the power of n times 7 to the power of m minus n, plus 7 to the power of n times 5 to the power of m minus n, now plus 7 to the power of m. Okay, so we have this 5 to the power of m, plus 7 to the power of m. So that's why we need to subtract these two terms from this. So subtract, now 5 to the power of n, 7 to the power of m minus n. And also there's 7 to the power of n times 5 to the power of m minus n. Okay, this is an important part. Then we can talk about three cases when both m and n are odd numbers, or m is an even, n is an odd, or m is an odd, and n is an even. So those three cases are both m and n, or odd number, or m is even, and n is odd, or vice versa. m is odd, and n is even. Okay, so just to talk about these three different cases, we can talk about this first case when your m is now then less than 2 times n. Okay, so in this case, I'll be still working on this factor in the form of this 5 to the power of m plus 7 to the power of n. But then again, I'll be focusing on this last two terms. So in that case, still your 5 to the power of m plus 7 to the power of n is going to be equal to this 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n times 5 to the power of m minus n plus 7 to the power of m minus n. Okay, but then again from the last two terms, right? 5 to the power of n times 7 to the power of n minus n minus 7 to the power of n times 5 to the power of m minus n. From the last two terms, I'll be factoring 5 to the power of m minus n times 7 to the power of m minus n. So now this minus 5 to the power of now n minus n times 7 to the power of m minus n. Okay, so I'll be factoring this term and make your parentheses. If you're making your parentheses, then we should have 5 to the power of, okay, now we have 2n minus m. That now plus 7 to the power of same 2n minus m. Okay. Then we can talk about the GCD of this 5 to the power of m plus 7 to the power of m, and 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n. So for GCD of this term. So using this expression, especially focusing on the last two terms, right? So this factored form of this last two terms, we can talk about your GCD is going to be equal to the GCD of 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n, and this factored form of these last two terms, which is just 5 to the power of n minus n times 7 to the power of n minus n times 5 to the power of 2n minus m plus 7 to the power of 2n minus m. Okay. So that is why 
the GCD of them is the same as the GCD of 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n. And then only this term inside of your parenthesis, which is 5 to the power of 2n minus m plus 7 to the power of 2n minus m. Okay. Then we can move on and talk about case number two when your m is greater than two times n. So let's talk about case number two. When your m is greater than two n. So in this case, also focusing on this factor in the form of this five to the power of n plus seven to the power of n, and also focusing on the last two terms. So let me write this down again. Your five to the power of n plus seven to the power of n. This is equal to five to the power of n plus seven to the power of n times 5 to the power of m minus n uh, plus 7 to the power of m minus n. Okay, then focusing on this last two terms, and this time I'll be factoring 5 to the power of n times 7 to the power of n only, right? And make your parenthesis. Minus 5 to the power of n times 7 to the power of n. Parenthesis, now 5 to the power of, at this time, m minus 2n plus 7 to the power of m minus 2n. Then we can do the same. We can talk about now the GCD of this term using this expression, especially this factor in the form of the last two terms. So now your GCD of what we are looking for, 5 to the power of m plus 7 to the power of m and 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n. Okay, the GCD of m is the same as GCD of 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n. And then this term inside of your parenthesis, which is 5 to the power of m minus 2n plus 7 to the power of m minus 2n. Okay. Okay, then using these two expressions, we can now talk something in general. So I'll be calling this, say, k, m, and n as the GCD of 5 to the power of m plus 7 to the power of m and 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n. Then we just talked about two different cases, right? So case number one was if your m was less than 2n. So in this case, your k mn. Okay, so using this representation, right? So your kmn has to be the same as now k of n. k of n and then 2n minus n. Same for case number two, when your m was greater than 2n. So we can represent your kmn as now k still this n, and then we have now m minus 2n. Okay, in the beginning we talked about three cases, if both m and n are odd numbers, or m is an even number, n odd, or n even, or n odd. So when you're both m and n are odd numbers, So in this case, m plus n has to be an even number. Or if one of m and n is an even number, but not both. But not both. So in this case, your m plus n is an odd number. So we can use this. Case when your m plus n is an even number, that means when both your m and n are odd number. Or m plus n is an odd number, which means any one of those m and n is an even number, but not both. So let's talk about this case number one. So this, let me call this as case number one, and this is case number two. So case number one, when your m plus n, okay, if this is an even number. 
So in this case, since we're using Euclidean algorithm, we can choose some numbers from M and N that should be big enough for us to analyze the patterns of number. So let me choose M as 13. And N is now equal to 5. Okay, so in this case, we are working on K, M, and N. That is then equal to K, 13, and 5. But make sure it's 13, right? So 13 is greater than 5 times 2. So it has to be case number 2. So that is why this K, 13, and 5. K, 13, and 5 has to be the same as K, 5, and 3. Then in this case, this, then in this case, 5 is now less than 3 times 2. So that's why it has to be case number 1 then. So that is why this k, k, 5, and 3, this has to be equal to k, 3, and 1. Then we can easily check this k, 3, and 1 has to be the same as k, 1, and 1. Okay, so that is why we can now talk about the GCD. Uh, what we are looking for, 5 to the power of m plus 7 to the power of n, and 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n. This has to be the same as now the GCD of, okay, when both your m and n are 1 and 1, so 12 and 12, which is just equal to 12. Okay, then now we can move on to this case number 2, when your n plus n is an odd number. This is the case that one of these two numbers is an even number, but not both, right? So that's why we're now talking about n plus n is an odd number. So just like the same, we can choose some numbers for m and n that should be big enough for us to analyze the patterns of numbers. So I'll be choosing m as 12 and n as now 5. So in this case, we're now working on k of 12 and 5. This is the case, 12 is greater than 5 times 2. So case number 2, meaning this k 12 and 5. This is going to be the same as k 5 and 2. But still, this 5 is greater than 2 times 2. So now still, 5 is greater than 2 times 2. So that's why still case number 2. So your k 5 and 2 has to be the same as k 2 and 1, which is easily checked as k 1 and 0. So that is why this GCD uh, 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n and 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n is the same as now the GCD of plug it in 1 to the m and 0 to the n, right? It's the same as now GCD of now then 12 and 2, which has to be just equal to 2. Okay, then we can represent the final answer. So the GCD of 5 to the power of m plus 7 to the power of n, and 5 to the power of n plus 7 to the power of n. Okay. This is going to be just equal to, now, 12. So this has to be equal to 12 if m plus n is an even number. Or this is equal to 2 if m plus n is an odd number. Okay, this is the final answer for the question. Okay, it's so a pretty interesting algebra question from Japanese math Olympia. So I'll be back with more videos, more questions like this sometime soon.